I think we found the Crocs of Barefoot Shoes. These are the Vivo Barefoot Ultra 3 Blooms, and these are actually the first Barefoot Shoes I ever bought. So should you get one of these? Stay tuned to find out. So these variant of the Ultra 3 Blooms, which I'll just refer to as Ultras from now on because it's a bit of a mouthful, they were made in collaboration with this brand called Finisterre. I think they're an outdoors brand, a bit on the higher end of pricing. So you'll see this one does have a Finisterre tag on it, but obviously the others don't. And this one has a unique colorway, but I can see now the colorways are a bit more muted, save for a greenish version. I do like the camo colorway though. That's quite nice. The name Bloom comes from the fact that it is partially made from a material that is derived from algae, which supposedly clogs up waterways and is just more of a pollutant, which is good. I think it shows good intent, even though it is just 5% of the overall product, but it's better than nothing, right? And I'm hoping that they can increase that percentage over time, which is sort of what they're saying too. The actual shoe has holes throughout, so it has a honeycomb pattern on the top and the sides right here all over. It also has some drainage holes here, as you'll see and there is no insole in this one. Very, very minimal cushion. All the cushion that you're getting basically is just from the material. It has a seven millimeter stack height, which makes it very similar to the Primus Lights. And as you can see, it is very rollable as you see here. It's also very light. You can see the weight here as I put it on a scale. So the laces here are elastic and you basically just pull and until it's your desired tightness and then you just use this to tighten it. So pretty simple, takes a few seconds to slip on and off, really easy. Now obviously the most striking part about this shoe is its overall look and aesthetic. I mean, it's not just a barefoot shoe, it's a barefoot shoe with holes in it. This is probably the shoe that I've gotten the most questions about by just random strangers. Question for you. What are those? Most importantly though, does my fiance approve of this look? What do you think of these shoes? So what is this really for? Vivo's marketing it as a water shoe, although obviously you can wear this into any activity. The outsole itself is puncture resistant, which I guess makes sense because they are meant to be taken on trips where you might encounter like sharp rocks and things like that. And because of the lack of insole or cushion here, they definitely feel more grounded and more barefoot than a lot of my other barefoot shoes. It's also very quick drying with a lot of drainage. Although one minor issue I've noticed, and this might be a feature or an issue, is that the drainage holes are a bit high. And so if you just like fully submerged your feet and then just left this to dry, there will still be some water puddling up here at the bottom, as you'll see in here. Now, for me, what do I actually use this for? I've been primarily using it for two things. One is as an all-purpose gym shoe when I'm not doing any sort of running. Now, I can run in these, but I prefer to wear these without socks. And when you're not wearing socks and you're doing a lot of running, there's just gonna be a lot of friction all around. So I don't really recommend this for running longer distances. I mean, running to my gym, I just wear these because that takes me like five minutes to do. In the gym though, when I'm lifting weights and doing things like squats, leg presses, things of that nature, this is where this shoe really shines because it has no cushion at all. It's the next best thing to going barefoot. I also just use these when I'm just stepping out to go to the shops and basically they're like a flip-flop replacement for me because I don't have barefoot sandals yet. Might get some in the future, but these just do the job just fine. I don't need to wear socks, it takes seconds to slip on and off. Now for more extreme uses, I haven't really put this to the test just yet. I did pack this on a day long hike once where we had to traverse through some water and I'm glad I had these as a backup shoe because my waterproof boots were fully submerged like ankle deep and these were a saving grace. Otherwise I just would have been sloshing around in wet boots the whole time. Now, no shoe is perfect and there are a few cons to these other than obviously the aesthetics, which is very subjective. Number one is that there is a bit of a break-in period here, which I found a bit disappointing because getting these, I was thinking that my feet would just feel free from the shackles of traditional footwear and they would feel super comfortable. But with these ones, this sort of honeycomb pattern, when it bends, it does get a bit sharp and it does irritate the top of my toes. So that took a few weeks to actually soften and even up to now when i am doing something which requires a lot of flex like planks for example i'll need to flex it like this that's still quite uncomfortable so in the gym for example when i want to do planks i just take these off and just do planks barefoot the second thing i find a bit annoying about this shoe is that sand can get 
in really quickly but there's no way for it to come out and i was surprised because i thought that this would be a perfect beach shoe but it really hasn't been that it's more of like a good way to head to the beach and then come out of the beach but not on the beach if that makes sense i mean most people would just go barefoot on sand anyway so would i recommend this it's a bit of a tough one for me I think if you really like this aesthetic, then just go for it. If you're going to be comfortable wearing this casually or even to work and you don't mind that people will stare at it and you really like the look, then yeah, I guess it makes sense to have this be one of your er earlier barefoot shoes. But if you're someone completely new to transitioning into barefoot shoes, maybe give this one a pass and go for something that looks more like a traditional sneaker, like a Vivo Barefoot Primus Light or like the Lems Primal line or any of those. Especially if you think you're going to do quite a bit of running, this shoe might not be the best for it, especially with that break in period that I found a bit annoying. It's also worth noting that this doesn't have an insole, so you're basically stuck with the default, very barefoot, very grounded option from day one. Unlike some other barefoot style shoes, which do have an insole, so you can start off a bit more cushioned and then slowly remove that insole over time as you're getting more and more comfortable. How about you? What do you think? Would you get one of these? If you're interested in seeing what I've been using mostly as my daily shoe though, click this link right here.